In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please, Lord. The hour is here when true worshipers will worship God in spirit and in truth. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control. You are listening to Pentecost Sunday Devotion with Father Eustace Siami, a salation of Don Bosco. Stay tuned. It is Pentecost Sunday of the 28th of May. 2023 and today indeed we are here to say Lord thank you because you want to affirm to us that the church is not a human institution because you want to tell us that today when the Holy Spirit came you began your own mission with the people of God. And you began your mission universally. And we want to celebrate this day by renewing our unity because the church is essentially unity in diversity. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Philip Madden celebrating his birthday today from Deza, Malawi, takes for us the first reading. Justus Chisanga and Mary Nayame Chisanga celebrating their golden anniversary in marriage. 50 years together in marriage from Kafue, Zambia. Take for us the responsorial psalm, Kabaso Chulumandan Tambo, from Kitwe, Zambia, celebrating her birthday today. Text for us the second reading. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Samuel Migap, celebrating his birthday today from Shindam Diocese in Nigeria. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Acts 2, 1 to 11. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Now they were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because each one had them speaking in his own language. And they were amazed and wondered, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes, and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Potters and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Arabia belonging to Silene, and visitors 
from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorio Psalm. Psalm 104, verse 1a, b, 24, ac, 29, bc, 30, 31, and 34. Response is taken from Psalm 104, verse 30. And the response is, Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord. O oh, my soul, O oh, Lord my God, how great you are. How many are your words, O oh, Lord? The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send forth your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. You take away their breath they die, returning to the dust from which they came. You send forth your Spirit, and they are recreated, and you renew. The face of the earth. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in His works. May my thoughts be pleasing to Him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Lord, send forth your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your Spirit Second reading, by one spirit we were all baptized into one body. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 3b to 7, and verses 12 to 13. Brethren, no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of working, but it is the same God who inspires them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia Alleluia, Alleluia Come, O Holy Spirit Fill the hearts of your faithful And kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his sight. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is one of my most favorite feasts in the church. Because of this day, I can speak in English and uh, transmit the word to you. Otherwise, everything should have been in Aramaic or everything should have been in Hebrew. But no, God opened the doors to humanity, to the rest of us on that Pentecost day. It is not that Pentecost began with the coming of the Holy Spirit. No, the term Pentecost means 50th. It was a feast that the Jews used to celebrate 50 days after the Passover. Seven weeks after Passover. So this was one of the three most important annual celebrations of the Jews. Pentecost was primarily a feast of thanksgiving for the harvest. The first fruits of the wheat crop were offered to God on that day. First fruits. So we have to keep that in mind. Pentecost and first fruits. Because I'm coming back to that. But later on, they also started celebrating on the same day. 
The day when Moses gave the law on Mount Sinai to the people of God. Which people of God? The Jews only. Aha. Uh -huh. And every year, every Jew used to gather in Jerusalem. Wherever they were, I like the commitment of Jews. I wish we could have a similar commitment. They were spending money on this feast. They would travel from Syria. They would travel from Egypt. They would travel from all parts of the world where they were. The world they had that time to come to Jerusalem. To keep the feast of Pentecost and Passover. They were coming to celebrate those feasts because that's exactly what religion meant to them. Some of us are unable to spend money on things of God. We are able to afford to go to all sorts of places except to holy places, except for things of God. They were able to spend money on that. And they would gather from all walks of life, even the proselytes, even those who had learned some other languages would come in Jerusalem and celebrate the Pentecost. And you know what? The Holy Spirit chose to come on this day because the prayer of Jesus Christ in John chapter 17 was, May they be one as we are one. I want that unity to be seen. I want the world to understand the universality of my mission. May they be one. On the day when they were one, gathered from all corners of life, the Holy Spirit came. This should define for you what Christianity is all about. It should make you understand that we are products of that unity. We are products of the universality that was shown on the day of Pentecost. We are celebrating the birthday of the church today. And if you don't understand the focal point, the focus of this birthday, then you will not understand what Christianity is all about. Christianity is about embracing unity in diversity. Understanding that every language, every tongue there is in this world must be respected. It must be honored. And the Spirit did this in tongues of fire. Fire which purifies. Fire which comes to burn anything evil and preserves good came upon the apostles. The spirit came in form of fire. It didn't come in form of water. No, it came in form of fire because fire has this function. It has the function of purifying. Religion had to be purified. A religion which was focused on just traditions and fulfilling the minimum requirements of the law where I say I have done this and I am okay. No, that law was not helping people to transform. We needed another law. The law of the Holy Spirit that would make people transform from within. This is exactly what prophet Jeremiah had prophesied in Jeremiah 31 verse 33. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. That is exactly what God came to do. Pentecost that was celebrating the giving of the law on Mount Sinai. Now start celebrating the giving of the new law. The law of the spirit so that people may be self-motivated 
so that people may do things right without anyone telling them to do them because the law is inside them. They are not looking left and right to see who is seeing them. No, they are doing things because something within them is telling them this is the right way. This is the way you should live your life. And they are doing it perfectly. That is the law of the spirit. And that is what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. The Holy Spirit directs our lives. The Holy Spirit is that conscience that tells you, no, you are supposed to be true to your spouse. No, you are supposed to be punctual at your workplace. No, you are supposed to be a man of dedication in your teaching and nursing and law career. You are supposed to be an example. And that's what the spirit does. And that's exactly why that spirit comes to purify the way we have been looking at things. The tongues of fire are just about that. The tongues of fire are about bringing warmth. Warmth in a cold world. The world that has become called to love, the world that is not showing any kind of remorse when things are not in the right way, the world that seems to ignore anything divine, it is so cold and we need the tongues of fire that restore warmth to our world. We want a world that is heated by love. We want a world that is heated by compassion. A world that feels for another person. A world that has that fellow feeling. Where I know the problem of my brother is my problem. What that person is going through is what I'm going through as well. And I need to do something about the plight of other people. I am involved because the spirit warms up everything. And where somebody who is spirited passes, the difference is sin. There is something different because there are tongues of fire there like tongues of fire. That's how a Christian must be. A Christian must be a person who is seen and known by that goodness that overflows within him, within her. And wherever he passes, wherever she passes, people must feel the heat. That's exactly what the spirit does. And you know, one more thing, the outcome of the outpouring of the spirit is the fact that everyone became comfortable of his own language, his own tongue. No one felt like the language he was speaking was out of place because these disciples were able to speak in various tongues. Everyone could hear them in their own language to say, you know what? The Holy Spirit makes us understand that there is nothing wrong in our native tongues. Before the church thought only Latin should be used as the language of the church. Not understanding that Pentecost had baptized all the languages. And it is nice when I go to places like Wange in Zimbabwe, where Daily Bread was born, I experienced that cocktail of languages and experience of Pentecost. Where you start with a Nyanja entrance song, you continue with Shona, come to Ndebele, come to Tonga, come to Zulu. Any language you can think of is sung in church there because these people understand that all the languages have been baptized by the Holy Spirit. And that shows the universality of our church. And knowing how universal our church is, we shouldn't underrate any language, any tribe, because we are all one. And since we are all one, no one is superior to the other. No, no matter how few you may be, 
you are still considered special in the sight of God. And when you understand this, you will be moving towards the full understanding and meaning of Pentecost. Pentecost unites us in tongue. Pentecost makes us understand that we are one people, no matter how different we might be. And when you know this, you will not have a church that is only meant for one tribe. For one kind of people, the churches we are in must be ready to embrace people of all walks of life from different corners of the world. That makes us Catholic. That makes us universal. There is identity card for those who understand the true meaning of Pentecost. That is becoming accommodative. Being people who are able to embrace one another despite the differences. And we see this in the second reading of today where St. Paul talks about the varieties of gifts of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Remember Pentecost was the day they were also celebrating the first fruits. The fruits of the Holy Spirit are also the gifts that we have. Those gifts that we have are effects of the Holy Spirit that is within us. And they are not meant to show how powerful we are or how exceptional you are. No, sorry, you're not very special because of the gifts that you have. No, in fact, you become more of a servant with those gifts and they shouldn't make you look different from other people you should make them be at the service of other people that's the meaning of the gifts the fruits that we receive they are not ours they are of the spirit they are of God and so we give them back to God by putting them at the disposal of the people there are people who have the gift of counsel. They are able to counsel other people. They are able to show that they can give a direction to others, but they do it with a sense of pride. There are people who are able to pray for others and even make them well, but they do it with a sense of pride. Then you are starving the Holy Spirit from working well in your life. Make sure you humble yourself before God when you are given that gift. Be generous to use it for the sake of the unity of the church. St. Paul says there are varieties of activities, but the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. It is not for your good. It is not meant just to become famous. No. It is meant for service, for the common good. That other people may benefit. And if you are a true child of Pentecost, a true child of the Holy Spirit, you are going to be more humble and more generous in sharing the gifts that God has given you. And you are not going to be jealous of other people who have gifts different from yours because you know they are doing everything for the common good. Jesus comes to his apostles in the gospel passage of today on the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were and he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I'm sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. And he said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. So John tells us the Holy Spirit came on the first day of the week, on the day that he rose from the dead. It is Luke who tells us it happened 50 days after the resurrection. But it doesn't matter. What is important is that the Holy Spirit was given by Jesus from the Father. The Holy Spirit was given by the Son from the Father. And the Father and the Son are the ones from whom the Holy Spirit processes. And he proceeds from the Father and the Son and is given to us. 
What is the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives? If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. The work of the Holy Spirit is to train us in forgiveness. We must learn to forgive. If you want the Holy Spirit to work in your life, learn to forgive. Because he has breathed on us the power to forgive, the power to show love to others. But it is also meaning this. In every Christian's life, we have to understand that this was given to the apostles. To the 11 who had gathered, the 11 stand for the leaders of the church. They were given the Holy Spirit to forgive sins. So, please understand what confession is all about. It is here that we understand that confession is a gift of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who works in a priest to help someone have the sins remitted, the sins forgiven. And that power has been given by Christ. And if you understand this, you are not going to underrate in any way the sacrament of confession. You will make use of it. Take this day of Pentecost. If you have never had chance to go for confession, to go there and understand that your sins are going to be forgiven. Jesus has given that power to us to forgive sins. And we do it in his name. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Well, do that end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Pentecost Sunday to you. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm.